Okay, so here we are in Recycle. Uh, this is version 2.1.2, if my memory serves me correctly. That's right, and it's the latest version. Um, and it's not an expensive application. And it's if you work with a lot of grooves and a lot of drum loops, it's well worth uh, getting hold of. Um, because it's really, the only, Rex files are really the only generic format that load in every single DAW. There are plenty of formats out there that contain MIDI and groove and slice information, but this is really the one that works across the board, PC and Mac. Um, I tend to teach it to my students from the get-go so that they're armed with it. Uh, I also teach them other methods for um, using timed grooves and loops, which I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. But let's concentrate on this first, and then we can move on. So, opening Recycle, you'll see um, a representation of your waveform. It's pretty similar to what we saw in Peak, really. Um, just different colors and slightly different style. But the first thing we want to do is start to move the sensitivity up. Now, with a really simple loop like this, and I've deliberately chosen this, like I said earlier, because it's simple, um, we should see the slice sensors um, clamp down on the transients really easily. Now, each one of these are transients, and you can see that a little speaker icon's come up. Now, I can play the slices back. So you can hear that they're playing back correctly. And we can see that it's missed one here. Um, I'm not going to turn the sensitivity up. If I did, it would probably catch them like that, but it's put too many in. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to draw some in just so you can see what's happening. So if we go to the pencil icon and I'll draw that one in. And that's looking pretty good. If, for instance, you had too many in, so say the sensor had come up with one here, you could just grab it and delete it. It's as easy as that. So just check them. And this is a really great way of extracting drum sounds from our loops. Later on, we'll be able to play these as single sounds. So let's get the loop working correctly. To do this, we use our left and right locators. Now, as you can see, I've selected two bars there and we've got the nice little fill in here with the open hat. So we're getting two complete bars. And it's picking up the fill section. So you can hear the loop's pretty perfect because of the sensing. All we've had to do is place the left and right locators in the right positions and it's looping back perfectly. Now, again, there's a crop under process and it does exactly the same as the crop in peak. It gets rid of everything outside of the left and right locators. So now we've got a 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz loop with our slices sensed. Perfectly. All we need to do now is tell Recycle how many bars are in it. So we know it's two bars. It's telling us it's 121.998 BPM. You can pretty much rely on the fact that that's 122. Um, but when we press the preview button here, and this is critical, everything lights up and we can put it to 122. Now it doesn't really matter what tempo you put in here because whatever tempo you put it in into your DAW, it should sync up fine. But we can audition what it's gonna sound like at say 130, 128. Now, because Recycle doesn't use time stretching and it uses slice-based editing, you keep your drum loop sounding pure and you don't get any nasty time stretch based anomalies. So you can speed the loop right up or slow it right down without really affecting its core sound. So I've got it back to 122 BPM. Let's try slowing it down. Now, you're gonna hear some gaps and I'll explain why. So it's slowed down and the drum, drum sounds sound essentially okay, but there are gaps. And that's because it is slices. And as you slow it down, if you can imagine a suit of armor or an armadillo's skin stretching, there are gonna be gaps as it stretches. And that's the way Recycle works. When it gets faster, these overlap and you don't really hear it. But when it gets slower, you're gonna get the gaps. So you saw me turn down this stretch algorithm maybe just before. If we turn this up, what it does is it puts a little bit more data on the end of each slice and actually reverses it and puts some release on so you get this natural open sound as we slow it down. I'll turn it right up because we've slowed it down th like 30 BPM more or less. Now 
And you can see we can slow it down to pretty much 106 BPM without any real effects. And right up into the 150s, and it still sounds the same. It still sounds punchy, deep, everything that the original drum loop had. So it's a great way of manipulating your drum loops. So keep this stretch on just in case you want to slow it down in future productions. Um, it won't make any difference if you're having it at the sim a similar BPM. And we're going to leave it at 122. This isn't really hugely important because when you load it into your DAW and change your DAW's project uh, BPM, this loop will change in time as well. So now we'll save it. Fogma drum loop, RX2, that's a rex file on the desktop. And now we're ready to import it into our DAW and look at a couple of other methods that we can use without using Rex files.